Greetings gentlemen and ladies, I am the Crypto Game Snob and in today's video I am showing off a little deck that I've been playing with, having a lot of fun with it, I put together, doing a little experimentation and it's actually working out really well, I uh, have won 9 of my last 10 games I think, give or take, and one of them, one of them was uh, extremely close, so basically a very good win ratio on this deck so far. Here's how it looks, okay this is all about the Moonlight Charm, Moonlight Charm is basically your go-to in this deck. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna mulligan for that Moonlight Charm. If you can get that in your starting hand and if you can get a nice one mana creature on the board, that's great. If it has to be two, that can be okay as well. But sip from spring and doing what you need to do to pip into that, basically what you wanna play sip from spring on turn two, uh, best case scenario, if you can manage do that, yep, it's re winning the game becomes a whole heck of a lot easier. Like you can see, pretty high win ratio here. Um, so here's here's a rundown of the cards. We got two Marsh Walkers, just because they have lots of health. This is a great creature to apply that Moonlight Charm buff to. Uh, Untamed Regrowth is one I'm kind of experimenting with. Uh, every now and then you can play an Untamed Regrowth to just get more on the board. You can get a buff on the board or another creature on the board or you can, uh, uh, in one of my videos you may see uh, that uh, I actually was able to sip from Spring and then and then Untamed Regrowth and then Moonlight Charm and then buff up my, my Pyramid Warden to like a like a 7-9 on turn 2 or 3 or something, like something rid really ridiculous, right? So Untamed re Regrowth is interesting, but feel free to swap that out for something else. Um, you'll also notice that there is two of everything in this deck. Uh, thanks to uh, the very, very helpful and uh, fantastic YouTuber Copper Pitch, I recently learned that uh, the way the mulligan works when you, when you initially are choosing your cards in the beginning of the game, the way the mulligan works is like this. Uh, basically, when you send a card back, and when you say, say you don't want it uh, in your starting hand, what that does is it actually sends back that card. Say you got, um, let's say you got an avatar, uh, say you got a sudden bloom in your first hand. When you send back one sudden bloom, if you have two of them, it actually sends back both of them, right? So you can't pull sudden bloom twice. So basically what that means is that if you have two of everything, right, and, and you're trying to mulligan for that Moonlight Charm, or Sip from Spring can also be good early on, um, but if you're trying to mulligan for that Moonlight Charm, instead of a 1 in 30 chance like you usually get, now you have a, a basically a 2 in 30 chance, right, 1 in 15 chance, but you're sending back cards by the doubles, so basically what it works down to is you kind of have somewhere between like a 30 to 45 percent chance of getting Moonlight Charm in your starting hand. That's my very rough math. And that is just because we have doubles of basically everything with two exceptions, Finny and Fruit Bear and Avatar of Nature. Avatar of Nature is very optional. You don't need her. I know she's more expensive. You can swap this out for anything else. It, it you know, this is not a card that actually even usually comes into play. It's just that I needed to put a single one off of something because everything else is a double of everything in order to really capitalize on getting that Moonlight Charm chance basically on turn one in my opening hand uh, and since Finny and Fruit Bearer actually does help a lot in this in this deck just because of those constant buffs the fact that you're always wanting to stay frenzied to keep that Moonlight Charm up you also drop down a Finian on the board and he starts summoning Vibrant Fruits uh, he can be very helpful, so I wanted Finian Fruit Bearer in my hand for that reason, and then I had a one-off to choose my next most powerful creature, and that was Avatar of Nature. But you can swap this out for something else, whatever, whatever makes you happy. Really, this is not uh, really a, a major part of the of the, bo of the deck. <clears throat> uh, but Finian Fruit Bearer is a very good part of this deck. He really can be helpful in buffing up your cards if you don't get Moonlight Charm, if you don't get Sip from Spring but you do get Finian Fruit Bearer, you can still start to get your cards buffed up, which is what this, this deck is all about. Um, we have a couple of Underbrush Boars. This is for early game crowd control uh, and also getting a creature present on the board instead of just a Canopy Barrage. Underbrush Boar is there to clear out your opponent's creature and hopefully survive the attack 
as well. That being said, if you don't have underbrush bore, I know he's also getting more expensive. You could probably swap these out for a canopy barrage or, or, or some control card would probably do the trick. Canopy barrage would probably be a pretty good option in there. The Black Jags, obviously, obviously just a very good card. Um, Sip from Spring. Now this is basically your one-shot Moonlight Charm, but with the perk of refreshing two mana if you happen to be frenzied. And being frenzied isn't too difficult because, like I say, you're going to try to mulligan for a marsh walker or, an, or, or, a, or a wild hog or something really low mana so you can have some presence on the board so that you can trigger the frenzy effects on all these relics. Um, so Sip from Spring, you can play that, buff up your creature to 2, and then refresh 2 mana. And then, like I say, if, if you happen to have an untamed growth in your hand, you can even get Moonlight Charm out on basically mana 3. Um, or, and if not, you know, you might throw down another underbrush bore or something like that with an, that additional two mana just to add more board presence. Our, our goal here is to sort of distract with board presence whilst we're trying to get our Moonlight Charm or Sip from Spring and all that sort of buffed up. Next up, we sort of want to keep our eye out for Aspect of Pangolin and we also want to keep our eye out for Jump on. Uh, this, of course, uh, Aspect of Pangolin gives armor to your creature. Sometimes I like to sack creatures on the board if they are not the ones I'm trying to buff up. If they're not really that important, if I have the option to sack it, that's because this gives plus three armor to a random friendly creature. But often what happens is because you're focused on buffing one creature, you already have like a three, six creature or even like a five, uh, eight creature on the board, like a five, eight marsh walker. And then you drop down Moonlight Charm, which gives him three armor. And then hopefully a little bit later on, you get jump on. So now you've got a huge marsh walker, maybe in like the nine damage, 10 health type range with overkill and three armor. And this happens really easily. You would be surprised how frequently this happens. I'll show you a couple of games after this, uh, after this instructional video. Uh, so aspect of pangolin gives you some armor jump on gives you some overkill and plus three strength so now if your opponent starts to catch up with you or maybe gets a little bit of board dominance but because you have that big creature that's continuously triggered frenzy so far and hasn't really worried about early game board control too much that that jump on really helps that overkill jump on damage and your huge creature really helps to wipe out your opponent's board and that's what that, that's all about now you can maybe swap out starving Sabretooth for uh, for Moon Craze Cyclops, I was actually thinking about that uh, in just just in the last couple of games. Moon Craze Cyclops might be a little better. You could also do um, Confused Rhino or something like that. But I thought Starving Sabretooth would be an interesting option to drop some armor onto if it, if that happened to come up, because then he could basically continue to gain plus one regen every time he attacks, every time he takes something out, and he wouldn't take necessarily much damage back thanks to the armor, but that's the thinking behind Starving Sabretooth. That being said, it hasn't really come up ever yet so far in the way that my games have gone down. That being said, <clears throat> having a nice big 4-5 creature on the board uh, is, is always nice. Just, you know, if you have nothing else, drop down a big creature and he can be helpful at that point. Uh, we also have two Pyramid Wardens. Now these are, again, one of the options for that early game uh, Moonlight Charm buff card. Uh, if you happen to start buffing up your Pyramid Warden, it can be really, really ridiculous. It becomes extreme. I mean, a 2-6 Pyramid Warden is already difficult to clear, so you can imagine that a 4-8 or a 6-10 a Pyramid Warden with potentially some armor on him as well uh, becomes basically a one-card uh, winning condition. And actually, you'll see that in one of my games here. Uh, Skeleton Heavy, just a nice big stat creature to put on the board. Just something to get out there at two mana. Wild Hog, Pyramid Warden, Skeleton Heavy, Black Jag, Underbrush Boar, sometimes two. Uh, all of these are potential good uh, Sip from Spring or Moonlight Charm targets just because we get them out early and they're very strong. Guild Enforcer, just because it's a very strong card to drop down for front line. Probably at this point... You'll find yourself with a nice buffed up creature, and then at, that, at that point you drop down your guild enforcer, and now your your big strong creature is behind a front line even, and uh, yeah, you, your opponent can't even get to it, even if they could. It's already so strong, it's so difficult to deal with. Guild enforcer could be swapped out for some other stuff too, but I've been having pretty good luck with that. And last but not least, since this is a very low curve, uh, early game dominance sort of deck, uh, if that fails, if you fail to get the jump on your opponent, if you fail to have board control, that's where Sudden Bloom comes into play. This is your win condition at the later mana range, at the six mana range. Probably you'll have something on the board, at least even if your 
uh, even if your opponent manages to keep up with you. If they do, that's when we drop, we drop down Sudden Bloom, trigger Friendly Effect, give plus 5-5 five, five to probably one of our Armored Creatures, Overkill, Twin Strike. This is our this is our later game win condition in case the early game win condition, uh, basically the early game frenzy uh, doesn't doesn't work for some reason. So that's our that's our that's our backup plan right there. Okay, let's play a couple games. I'll show you how this goes. Okay, let's get into our first match of the day. For God Power, I actually like Flourish. It's not great usually, but uh, in this case. It's good. Uh, jump on is also nice to have, but <clears throat> early on I just kind of want to load my hand with some smaller creature cards, but in this case I actually have one Marshwalker, which is perfect. I also get to go on turn one, so I'm going to drop down a Marshwalker, which is going to be extremely difficult for War to clear on the first hand. I don't even know if War has anything to clear a Marshwalker on its first, on mana one, basically. So Marshwalker goes down, and then I have my Moonlight Charm land next. Uh, he's, of course, planning his Out of His Misery, which is a good, solid play. Out of His Misery, very powerful card indeed. But uh, initially, I want to trigger that Frenzy effect, pip into my Moonlight Charm. If I can manage to do that, my win percentage chance goes way, way through the roof. Now I have a 3-5 Marshwalker with uh, Regeneration. He's getting an Enduring Shield ready at this point, and uh, basically got my strategy all worked out at this point. I have a nice Pyramid Warden on the table at this point. Also, my Marshwalker is going to become even more scary. 5-8, and I've got Aspect of Pangolin in my hand as well, plus 3 armor to a random creature, and you got to keep in mind that that is indeed random. And that is why I don't like to play Badgers, because you don't want your armor dropping onto a Badger. That's kind of, kind of the worst case scenario. But uh, in this case scenario, I could drop my armor onto either Pyramid Warden and I'd be happy. I could drop it onto my old Marshwalker and that would be also just fine. Um, no real bad option and that's the whole, whole reason I like to use Flourish, although I almost never use my God Power, honestly. Uh, hypothetically, it could be useful occasionally. Um, now, I would have probably rathered that to go on Pyramid Warden. It would have basically made my Pyramid Warden unkillable. And at this point, I'm kind of debating between just hitting him in the face or knocking out some of his creature cards. Uh, I decide to take out this Boil Blood Outlaw. This card is kind of a pain in the butt because whenever it attacks, it gets plus one strength if it survives. Not that it has any good targets on the table at the moment, but he does have that Enduring Shield equipped, which could keep his Blood Boil Outlaw alive and make it a big of a problem. At this point, however, I have a 7-10 Marshwalker with three points of armor and a 2-5 Pyramid Warden. I've also got Jump On in my hand, ready to go, and Sudden Bloom, just in case this goes into the later game. Huge 710 Marshwalker with, with all that armor. Jump On is probably going to, I'm thinking to myself, probably going to absolutely wipe his board, uh, or at least certainly come close to it, right? Now it kind of looks like the board is getting kind of stacked in his favor. Well, that's where Jump On comes into play, because when your opponent gets ahead, but you've got a super big buff creature, nothing like a little bit of overkill to absolutely clear house and overkill hits perfectly in this case, knocking off all of his creatures, giving me a 10-10 overkill, three armor marsh walker. I don't know what minute we're in here. We're just, we just entered into mana five. And that's the other really great thing about this deck is it that is so tempo, so low curve. Uh, if you're trying to get a bunch of games in fast and actually win a bunch of games, uh, this is a really quick deck to play you can get in like a lot of your games really fast and actually have a really good win ratio out of it i've been actually probably spending like five minutes on my games which is extremely quick like i say there's that huge front line just in case any problem was to come up at this point in the game uh kind of deciding here between either taking out his angel bruiser just in case you never know what might happen but i don't really think he's got a lot of options at this point and we're two uh two hits away from from victory um, yeah, he's basically got nothing in his hand at this point, and this is, this is essentially game. That's about, that's about it, but you guys can see just how fast that game went. It was so blitzy, so fast, there was no point in when, which we were ever really in any serious trouble. Uh, good game, though, Dr. Uh, Der, Stif Der, Stiffen Der Stiffenwolf. Good game, brother, good game. All right, so like I say, you guys, uh, Flourish is pretty good as a god power option and definitely do your best to try to mulligan 
for that uh, for that Moonlight Charm. Here I'm just experimenting around with some different combos. This is a bit of an earlier game before I decided that Flourish is definitely the, the best option for this deck. The little furry creatures, you just don't want them, honestly. You don't want them to get your buffs, your random buffs. It's not too good. But yeah, Mulligan, another Moonlight Charm in hand. We've got... Uh, we got a Pyramid Warden, and we got a nice Black Jag, we got some good stuff. So a turn one Pyramid Warden is a good option, even though that will unfortunately slow down uh, when you can pick up your Moonlight Charm. You have to wait for three mana, but your opponent does have to get through a 2-6 Pyramid Warden before you start buffing it. So they basically get one turn to deal with him, right? So they throw down their answer, and then they have one turn to deal with him afterwards, unless they got maybe like a like a canopy barrage or a lightning or something a little bit later. Um, but yeah, Pyramid Warden is is a nice card to sit on the table and just buy you that extra time that you need to get you your three mana, just in case you didn't get any good one mana drops, which I, I did a little bit later, but not initially in my initial hand. So now things are looking really good here. I can trigger that frenzy effect with my Pyramid Warden. I can run my Black Jag into the Wild Hog, get a favorable trade out of that in my Pyramid Warden. Actually, my Pyramid Warden won't get buffed because the Moonlight Charm buffs up the strongest creature, and that's going to be my Black Jag, but that's okay. That's just fine. We can black, we can buff my Black Jag no problem at all. Also great because that Black Jag has one to reach in. Right? It might be alright. It might be nice to get that Pyramid Warden just uh, really high on health, high, high on damage, make him kind of an impassable wall, but we bring him out of range just enough so that that Hunt Warden is unable to deal with him directly. And I can't remember what happens next here. There we go. Hunt Warden, and he's probably got an answer for that. What's he got? Oh, yes, okay. Archer Guy. Archer, Archer. I, what? I forget. I almost never use that card. So I forget what that's called. Anyway, um, now at this point, I'm kind of hoping to hit face so I can trigger that Frenzy effect again. If not, I could have hit face with my Moonlight Charm just to get another Frenzy effect in there, but I was lucky enough to hit face. I'm not worrying about dealing with his board. I'm more concerned with buffing up my creature as big as my creature can possibly get. Throw down that nice big starving Sabertooth, which helps with his, you know, kind of board dominance at the moment. Like, he's definitely got a lot more creatures on the board than I do, but I have one big scary kitty cat that could basically deal with most of those problems. And there's, like I say, there's our, our emergency win condition, Sudden Bloom, um, which we aren't really in an emergency situation at the moment. We've got tons of creatures on the board, tons of stats, a 9-9 Jag with one regen, Starving Sabertooth, a mean old pig, super confused and uh, ready to do battle. And in just two more turns, Sudden Bloom will become available. we got lots of cards on the table, like I say. And, uh, yeah, basically, uh, he's got, you know, he's got a lot of cards on the table as well. But we've definitely got the stronger, the stronger deck at the moment. Some confused creatures. You never know where they're going to go. I could just run straight into my Jag and get taken out. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, okay. Mm -hmm. Canopy Barrage is uh, is not a bad option here. Um, I was hoping it would take out my pig, but uh, either way it would have been okay. My Black Jag probably would have been just fine. And like I say, that's where Flourish might come into play if you need to get just like plus one more health and then get your creature out of out of um, out of lethal range, basically out of out of out of destruction range from by your, by your opponent. So in this case, Black Jag does not cooperate, does not go where I want him to go thinking about drawing another card, but nah, I decided to just throw down a pig, throw down Skeleton Heavy. Uh, like I say, lots of low mana, but good stat creatures. Uh, Underbrush Boar, really good for keeping board control and hopefully surviving that initial hit. Anyway, at this point, is looking uh, basically over because he probably doesn't know what's coming next, but it is indeed a sudden bloom. I've got the Skeleton Heavy on the board to trigger that effect. I've also got the Black Jag to, well, try to trigger the effect just in case the Skeleton Heavy gets taken out. But that's just a whole lot of Black Jag to try to chop through. So at this point, you're going to want to drop your Sudden Bloom after triggering Frenzy. Hopefully it goes to the Jag. If not, it's still okay. But yeah, there we go. To the Jag. And uh, 
one and then overkill and twin strike that's it super fast games i've also put together a budget version of the assam call and i'm going to call it the moon knight madness deck here uh, i'm going to put the deck link description codes in the link description area below so if you guys want to copy this over here's the budget version basically i swapped out the pyramid wardens for a shield maiden and i swapped out the avatar of nature for brazen moose that should work pretty good shield maiden not quite as good but we just want a nice a nice big creature as much stats as we can get there something nice to buff up potentially or or to slow our opponent down uh, and that's what we're looking at with the uh, shield maiden anyway uh, yeah nothing like the pyramid warden but this should basically do the trick as well okay